the devil and Satan bound. Revelation chapter 20 verses 2, 7 and 10. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, for ever and ever. These verses are taken to indicate that the serpent in Eden was the devil, and that this is a personal being which is responsible for spiritually deceiving the world. Verse 10 says that Satan is to be thrown into the lake of fire for ever. Eternal fire represents total destruction. See Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 27 and the letter of Jude verse 7. It is not to be taken literally. Thus Satan is to be totally destroyed. Angels cannot die or be totally destroyed. See Luke chapter 20 verses 35 and 36 therefore satan is not an angel death is also cast into the lake of fire revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 death is not a being or a person it is an abstract concept death being cast into the lake of fire shows that it is going to be totally destroyed or ended the beast and the false prophet are also there from what we learn earlier in Revelation, these are human organizations or governments or kingdoms and empires and according to this verse they are also to be destroyed. Romans chapter 6 and verse 23 says, The wage of sin is death. Those who commit sin will be punished with death, not eternal fire. Therefore, the lake of fire, where they are, must represent total destruction and death. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 14 says, As much, the lake of fire is the second death. The devil being called that old serpent means that whatever is represented by the devil or the serpent, be it our evil desires or our political system, as the characteristics of the serpent in Eden. The dragon is not a literal dragon, therefore the serpent is also to be taken figuratively. Sin and spiritual deception come from our own evil art. See the Gospel of Mark chapter 7 verses 21 to 23, the letter of James chapter 1 verses 14 and 15. The prophet Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9 says that our art is too deceitful for us to fully appreciate just how deceptive it is. Also this evil art is sometimes termed Satan but Satan is not a force outside that evil art. It is the art itself. Notice that Satan's deceit of the nations and all of his powers were totally in the control of God. See Revelation chapter 20 verses 2, 3 and 7. Satan is not a free agent who acts as he wishes without regard for God. If the devil in the sense of a personal being is caught hold of and bound at the start of the thousand years at the return of Christ how then are we to understand that the devil was destroyed by the death of Christ and by the fact that a perfect Jesus had human nature? Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. How come he is still running free at the time of Christ's return? Further, Jesus had prophesied how in his death he would bind the same word the strong man and enable us to spoil the devil's house Matthew chapter 12 and verse 29 the devil in the sense of sin and the power of sin was indeed bound by the Lord's death the parable of the wheat and tars helps explain things further the tars the people and the systems who follow the 
devil in the sense of the desires of sin grow together with the wheat until the Lord comes and the angels go forth and bind them in bundles to burn them. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 30. Here in Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 and 2 we have an angel binding the devil and then burning him in the lake of fire. There's an obvious connection here. Surely the idea is that those people and systems who have followed the devil, the flesh or sin will be exposed for whom they are, bound by the angels and destroyed by the end of the thousand years. The Lord uses the same figure of binding to describe how the condemned people at the final judgment will be bound and on foot by the angels and then destroyed. Matthew chapter 22 and verse 13. The great dragon, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. This is a symbol for a political organization which represents the serpent man's sinful nature or evil desires. The fact that it is bound for a thousand years of Christ's millennial reign, the first part of this kingdom which he will set up on the earth at his second coming, shows that this organization is very much in evidence in the last days before his coming. This organization is bound during the millennium. It then reappears with God's permission at the end of the thousand years and inspires a political confederacy of nations to attract. This organization is bound during the millennium. It then reappears with God's permission at the end of the thousand years and inspires a political confederacy of nations to attack Christ. Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle. This has many echoes of the confederacy against Christ in these last days before the second coming. The same kind of political system will perhaps be allowed to develop again at the end of the thousand years. However, it is totally destroyed along with the other political systems. The beast and the false prophet that meet their end at Christ's second coming. The old book of Revelation is full of allusions to the Old Testament prophecies. Revelation chapter 20 verses 1 to 3 is surely based upon Isaiah chapter 24 verses 21 and 22 which prophesies that the kings of the earth will be gathered together, imprisoned in a pit and punished. It is these very human kings of the earth who are described in the more figurative language of Revelation as Satan.